oftentimes when you have tension in your iliacus muscle, it can affect the deep hip rotators in the pelvis and your pelvic floor. This is because these muscles will play tug of war with the muscles in the front of the hip. So the iliacus is very close to the front of the hip, whereas these muscles are at the back of the hip. The muscles that I'm particularly gonna focus on in this session is the deep hip rotators, which attach to the femur, this is your leg bone, and to your, um, close to your sit bone, basically. There's a bunch that are a little bit cut off here, um, but there's a bunch that um, really control how your hip moves in a very subtle way. They're kind of like the rotator cuff for your hip. There's a special muscle called the obturator internus, which attaches right to the inside portion of the pelvic bone. So here's your sit bone where you sit and you put your hand underneath, you feel it bony. And then right inside is the obturator internus. And that muscle goes all the way through this little hole. It's called the obturator foramen. And then attaches here to the outside of the hip bone. These muscles are important to address if you're experiencing any kind of pelvic floor pain or if you know that you have a lot of tension in your iliacus because oftentimes they are tight with the iliacus and if they are not given some attention as you're working through your process, um, they may be a contributing factor to making the iliacus become tight again. So it's really good to check these and make sure that they're relaxed and happy. So um, there's a few methods. I'm gonna first start with the obturator internus, which is that muscle that's right on the inside of your sit bone. So if you're sitting down on a hard surface, you can put your hand underneath your butt and sit down on your hand, and you should be able to feel that bony part of your butt uh, touch your hand, right? So if I'm putting my hand under myself like this, it'd be similar to me putting my hand on this skeleton here. Actually be turned around this way but be putting my hand under the skeleton, under that bony part. Then what you can do is you can curl your fingers kind of like this to access that inside portion of the pelvic bone where the obturator internus attaches. So um, what I'm gonna do is sit on my hand and curl my fingers around to get to that muscle. So again, I'm finding that bony part and then I'm curling my fingers around the inside of my sit bone. Um, and you, oftentimes you'll find that this area is tender and tight. So you can take your hand and kind of fine, move it back and forth in this direction and find where that tension is. And similar to the hip hook, you can put prolonged pressure on it to try to get it to relax. Now, even though the hip hook isn't necessarily designed for the obturator internus, I've had many of clients that have pelvic pain and have tension in this muscle use the hip hook for this purpose as well. So similar to using your hand, it's kind of the same shape that I was just describing with that curling motion. Um, you can place that tip right on the inside surface of that sit bone. And you can modulate how much pressure you put on it by gently bringing your body back onto the hip hook to whatever degree you feel comfortable. And then similar to when you're using the hip hook for the iliacus, you can push on the lever to help get that curve up that curve pressure around that inside surface of that sit bone. So this is what that would look like. <clears throat> so again, I'm sitting on it like this. My sit bone would be here, like this. And then I'm using that leverage to kind of get on that inside surface of the pelvis. Now, a lot of people are concerned about doing this because your anus is very close to this, your sit bones. But rest assured, you know, there's plenty of space to put pressure on that muscle without invading any of your private spaces. So, um, and it's very easily accessible externally and something that's very, very important to check out. The other thing that I wanna mention and I'll go back to is these deep hip rotators on the outside. So the obturator internus, which we just discussed was, is part of this muscle group, but there are quite a few other muscles right here that you can address with a small ball. Um, you can use the four inch ball, but I find that a smaller ball will help get in there a little bit deeper to release this area. So again, it's this spot here that we wanna place the ball. So similar to using the ball for the piriformis, you'd lie down on your back 
and you would bridge up, but this time the ball will go a little bit lower. So instead of going up near your tailbone area, it's going to go a little bit lower, closer to where the crease of your butt cheek is. And from this position, you would straighten your leg in order to get adequate amount of pressure. Now, this might not be enough pressure. You may need to put a block underneath this ball to get it a little higher, which works well. Or you can use the bigger ball and experiment with that. But the key is to have it a little bit lower, kind of like a little bit above where the crease of your, um, your butt is and um, have your legs straight in order to get that pressure. Now, similar to using this for the piriformis, you can rotate your body a little bit back and forth to try to find where that tender spot is. You can even take this, this leg that you're working on and rotate it a bit to try to find where that tension is. And we'd be moving up and down to find where it's tight. And then when you find that magic spot, holding prolonged pressure to let it release. That's a 30 to 90 seconds. So as you're using the hip hook, these are areas worth investigating, whether or not you have pelvic floor pain, or you know if you're even an elite athlete who's working on um, developing a better stride length or improving your ability to pivot, these dip, deep hip rotators can definitely impact your performance. Feel free to reach out back out to us with any other questions and I hope this has been useful for you.